Take beer. Take beer. Take beer. Take beer. I seek reference of the law against the rejected enemy Satan. I bear witness that none deserve to be worshipped except for one supreme being alone, Allah the Almighty. And I bear witness that Muhammad, son of Allah, who will leave is his messenger, our prophet, sent to all of humanity. We ask Allah's exaltations and blessings upon our leader and teacher, Muhammad the prophet, son of Allah, who will leave from his companions, the believers, the righteous people all over the world. Amen. And again, we say to you, take beer. Allah tells us in the Quran, in now will a faith in who the enemy mass. Little let he be back to have you there. What would then little enemy? Translated, it says, surely the first house has been constructed, appointed. For all of humanity, the Kaaba that's in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, is not for Muslims. It's the Nas. It's for the whole of humanity. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. And it says, in Ma'awala, it says it's the first house. And many people criticize us, and they criticize the Quran when the Quran says that the Kaaba is the first house because they don't understand. They tell us, that, that is wrong because of other temples and shrines were there before the Kaaba. But they don't understand. The Kaaba was the first house of worship for one God, Takbir. All the other houses were before, but they worshiped many gods. But the, but the Quran is letting us know that the Kaaba was the first house to worship one God. Alhamdulillah. Why is this important? Because many gods is a plan to control humanity. The many different gods has been given to humanity from some man. Some man invented the many gods. And therefore, if you follow the many gods, then that man is controlling you. I hope you understand. And the Quran is bringing out the hidden, the hidden knowledge behind many gods. There's a god of beauty. I think, I forget the name. It's a Greek god for beauty. There's a god for speed, Apollo. There's a god for regenerative power, Aphrodite. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? And they make these different gods. And they even make statues out of the god. The Quran and Islam comes to tell you that these false gods, they are false because the only thing they have done is studied your human nature and made the God after your nature. The God of speed is the speed that's in you. The God of beauty is the beauty that's in you. The God of power is the power that's in you. So the manipulators of humanity looked at your excellence that Allah created in you and took the excellence out of you and made it a statue or a picture and you are bowing down to your own excellence and realize it not. So this is why we have the Hajj. And at the end of the Hajj right now, you've got two over, they say two million people, it's not two million, it's about five million. They always play it down because they have, they have no way of having the biggest demonstration in the world to com be competed with Prophet Muhammad's community. There is no congregation of people by hundreds of thousands, even a football game might have a hundred thousand, but they got violence on the field and off the field. But in your heart, two to three million, no violence at all. Take beer, that's a miracle. And that's a sign of what the world is going to come to. The Hajj is saying that in time, the world is going to study and learn from the wisdom of Prophet Muhammad and the religion of Islam and the time is going to come in the future, you listen to this, where there will be no more police. I know you don't believe this. No more army, army. I know you don't believe it. It's going to happen because that sign 
you see it in high. And we're going to take a delegation, inshallah, from the United States next year, between 1,000 to 2,000 people. You invited to go with us. We're going to go on Hajj. And when we go on Hajj every day, we're going to explain the symbolism so you know the meaning of the right of what you're doing per day. Tap beer. And this is the last day of the Hajj where they make the sacrifice. And you know what they do on this last day? They stone the devil. They stone him. The last, all of the, the biggest day for Hajj is Arafat. And Arafat happens on the ninth day. And why is it happening on the ninth day? For the same reason you have Ramadan in the ninth month. You have Ramadan in the ninth month. Arafat is the ninth day. Why is that? Because you were born in the ninth month after being in your mother's womb. Do you understand? And just as you were born from your mother's womb in the ninth month, in a perfect human body, no sin in that body. Likewise it is during the month of Ramadan, when you complete the fast of Ramadan, you are a pure human being, as though you were born from your mother's womb again. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. And let me tell you this. You know, this Hajj comes in the third month after the after the fast. You know that, right? The fast happens in the ninth month. But this comes in the third month. The third month after. Why is the third month after? Because you are supposed to be pregnant with the discipline that you learn in the Ramadan. And a woman knows when she's definitely pregnant. When? In the third month. Allah. So Allah is, is creating human beings twice. He's created your physical body in perfect excellence. And now he's creating your mind to be in perfect excellence by you following the perfect script that is El Quran Kareem. Allah Akbar. I'm doing this very quickly. I know some persons have to go back to work. <laughs> it's a little warm in here because the air conditioner went out. So please tell your rich friends to make big donations so we can repair the air conditioner. And also make your donations to help the flood victims in Houston. We're Muslims, and anybody suffering from anywhere, we have to respond to that. So please do that for us. I want to say this. When you go to the Hajj, you can be the king. You can be the president. You can be the general of the army, the engineer, the doctor, the lawyer, all these big things. When you go to Hajj, you must come to Hajj as though you were freshly born. You have to take all of your decorated clothes off to show you distinction from another man. And you have to put on a white top and a white bottom like the mama puts on the baby after his first born. Why? Because you have to come back to the original nature that you came in the world with. We men, the men have to put on the diaper. Women don't put on that. They, some women wear clean white clothing, but they don't have to. It's the requirement for the men that we wear a white top and a white bottom. Meaning what? Meaning that my bottom means that I should keep my original nature pure and white and innocent. And my top means that my development intellectually should evolve out of my original purity and original obedience to nature. So I have white on the bottom and white on the top. Purity on the bottom and purity on the top. This is our deed. This is the understanding that we have. So at any rate, the Quran is that document that says all human beings have in their nature the desire to be free. Nobody can be denied their rights to go to Mecca. You're free to go there. You need to understand what this is all about. And more importantly is the freedom of your intellect. It's the freedom of your productive mind. This is the nature. No government can take your right away from you. This is the Hodge, man. You think the Constitution of the United States is the right document? Before the document of the Constitution was the Hodge. All men are created equal. Isn't that in the Constitution? But where's the demonstration? The demonstration is your Hodge. Tactia. The great president, the 
great king, he can't come with all his clothing. He has to come with the equal clothing of the most common man on the planet Earth. Look. Okay? So you want to see social equality? You want to see dignity? You want to see freedom in its biggest picture? Look at the heart. And it happens every year. So humanity will not have an excuse to say that they cannot bring equality in any quarter of the world. Most of you don't understand what I'm saying. Probably can't appreciate it. But that's okay. In time you will. So as I conclude, you don't know what it's telling you? You've got that big group of people. Two, three, five million people there. What is that? It's group personality. The hardest group personality. And you have what? Individual personality. And this big group of people are obeying Muhammad the prophet, obeying Allah in all of the rituals by millions. What does that do to the individual? The individual personality is formed by the group personality. I'm walking. You don't, you, you don't see what I'm saying, inshallah, I'm going to finish what I say. Maybe I'll continue it in Juma. It is so powerful until group personality is practiced in this country. You know how they practice it? With television, with internet. And that group on the media is trying to form the individual who's watching. So the group personality has been protected in its powerful form and function with the Hodge, with the demonstration of the Hodge. The Hodge is going to outlast the internet. It was here before the internet, it's here now, but the internet is going to be here after the internet. Your religion. So may Allah bless you and give you great inspiration and love this religion as you love life itself and pray for Allah's prophet's success, Muhammad, his messenger, our prophet, some of us, and pray for our community and our community. So again, I thank you, may Allah reward you with great understanding, and I hope I gave you some understanding of the heart. And then inshallah, we'd like for you to go with us next year. We want to take a thousand to two thousand people from this community. Nationally. So I thank you, and I'm going in what I got to say. You have someone else? Come on over, young man. He looks better than me. Maybe you give me more attention. I even look like this. <laughs>